Good afternoon and welcome back once again to Lunch Time with Pastor Shane for this Wednesday, March 24th. Uh, again, if you are joining us uh, for the first time today, welcome. Uh, glad you are here. Um, I like to keep everybody reminded each time that this is a little bit different. It's really just a part of our Lent season where we are really trying to be intentional about carving out quiet time with God and hearing from His Holy Spirit. So this isn't a thing where you're going to sit here for the next 30 minutes to an hour and hear me uh, teach or preach on some section of the Bible. Uh, we are going to read scripture, but it's not a Bible study. We are going to pray together, but it's not a prayer meeting. We're going to read the verse of a hymn, but it's not a hymn sing. We are here to simply to spend this first 15 minutes or so, give or take, to uh, hear from each of those sources, even some reflective uh, readings from some other pastors, teachers, authors, theologians. Uh, so amongst all of those uh, words that we're going to read and hear, uh, what we're, we're asking and praying for is the Holy Spirit to bring something up off the page, uh, whether it's the page of Scripture, uh, reflective thoughts from another author or teacher about something about Christ or our subject, uh, uh, which is, you know, for this week, our subject and theme is woundedness and suffering uh, of ministry. And... Uh, so we're going to uh, read uh, from a psalm and from a New Testament uh, book, and then we um, will read the reflective thoughts of, uh, of another uh, individual and have some time of prayer together, and then we'll close. And that'll take about 15 minutes or so, and then you will go into your quiet time. And whatever word or phrase kind of popped out off of the page when we were reading it, that you want to jot down, uh, write it down on a piece of paper, Hopefully you're keeping a journal as you do these things. And then when we uh, close here together, then that's the time for you to go into your quiet time. Um, if you don't have time to do the quiet time right immediately after this time together, then pick some portion of the day where you can do it and just get alone with God, take that word or phrase, and just try to really listen intentionally uh, to God's Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit. So as we start off today, we're going to start with the world's greatest collection of church jokes. Uh, this is a couple little excerpts uh, from a little couple of notes that were written by some children uh, to the pastor. And he, the first one was from Ella, Ellen, who was nine years old, and she wrote this. Dear pastor, I hope to go to heaven someday, but make it later rather than sooner. <laughs> and then from Stephen, age eight. I would like to go to heaven someday because I know my brother won't be there. <laughs> I assume he and his brother don't get along real well. Well, uh, let's pray and ask uh, for the Holy Spirit into our time together so that uh, we are uh, focused on uh, him and him helping us to see something that he has for us to, to learn today. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, you uh, are the light of life and the light of our lives each and every day. You are uh, all of our source of wisdom and comfort and hope for the future. We ask that during this time that we spend together today, that we would uh, sense your presence, sense your transforming power uh, during this uh, hour and during this day. And uh, may it then uh, prepare us uh, to do the ministry that you have us to do this day, uh, the work that you've already prepared for us. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the psalm this week is Psalm 56, and I'm going to be reading that psalm from the voice translation. This is for the worship leader, the heading states, a prayer of David to the tune, Silent Dove in the Distance, when the Philistine oppressors seized him in Gath. So uh, they uh, give us a little notation here at the beginning. Psalm 56 brings to mind the time when David fled from Saul and sought help from the Philistines, his former enemies. In his time of panic and fear, David found courage in trusting God to do what could not be done by human power and ingenuity alone. So here it is in the voice translation. Show mercy to me, O God, because people are crushing me, grinding me down like dirt underfoot all day long. No matter what I do, I can't get myself out from under them. My enemies are crushing me. Yes, all day long, O oh highest of high. For many come proud and raise their hands against me. When struck by fear, 
I let go, depending, depending securely upon you alone. In God, whose word I praise, in God I place my trust. I shall not let fear come in, for what can measly men do to me? All day long they warp my words. All their thoughts against me are mangled by evil. They conspire, then lurk about. They eye my every move, waiting to steal my very life, because they are wicked through and through. Drag them out in your just anger, O God, cast them down. You have taken note of my journey through life, caught each of my fear, tears in your bottle. But God, are they not also blots on your book? Then my enemies shall turn back and scatter on the day I call out to you. This I know for certain. God is on my side. In God whose word I praise and in the eternal whose word I praise. In God I have placed my trust. I shall not let fear come in. For what can measly men do to me? I am bound by your promise, O God. My life is my offering of thanksgiving to you. For you have saved my soul from the darkness of death steadied my feet from stumbling so I might continue to walk before God embraced in the light of the living. Some good words in there, uh, words of uh, comfort for those who um, have been or are being wounded in ministry and really words of warning for those who are doing the wounding. It's the balance of God's word. Well, as we then move into our second scripture reading, we're going to move into the New Testament book of 2 Corinthians. Uh, this comes from chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians, verses 3 through 11. So if you want to turn to 2 Corinthians ch chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. And I will read it in the New International Version. All right, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 11. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us, as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. So some good uh, words uh, where we go for our comfort and for our help uh, to God himself. Well, the reading for reflection for this Wednesday then comes from the prophetic imagination by Walter Brueggemann, the theologian. So let's see what he has to say. I believe that the possibility of passion is a primary prophetic agenda and that it is precisely what the royal consciousness means to eradicate. Passion as the capacity and readiness to care, to suffer, to die, and to feel is the enemy of imperial re reality. Imperial, imperial economics is designed 
to keep people satiated so that they do not notice. Its politics is intended to block out the cries of the denied ones. Its religion is to be an opiate so that no one can discern misery alive in the heart of God. Hmm. Well, Walter Brueggemann always kind of uh, uses words and phrases that kind of uh, you got to maybe read a couple times, you got to think on, you got to really chew on it a bit. So let me read it again. I believe that the possibility of passion is a primary prophetic agenda and that it is precisely what the royal consciousness means to eradicate. Passion as the capacity and readiness to care, to suffer, to die, and to feel is the enemy of imperial reality. Imperial economics is designed to keep people satiated so that they do not notice. Its politics is interested to, uh, to block out the cries of the denied ones. Its religion is to be an opiate so that no one discerns misery alive in the heart of God. So uh, some interesting thoughts uh, about um, the reality of passion and passion meaning suffering. Um, and how that uh, comes up against uh, our reality, our current reality, the imperial reality, where we have a tendency to be selfish human beings. Uh, and so we surround ourselves with um, this, this imperial politics, economics, religion, even to satiate us, to uh, make us um, not want to, you know, ever enter into suffering for the sake of uh, for the sake of someone else. Let's go into then our time of prayer together. I'm going to allow you just a few moments of silence to lift, what up, to lift up whatever might be on your heart today. Maybe something on your own behalf or someone that you know and love, family, friend, neighbor. So uh, take a few moments to do that and then I'll close, it, close this out. Lord God, you are our comforter and our counselor, and you is all wisdom. Lord, our human nature, many times when we have been wronged or people have hurled insults at us or twisted the truth is, is to retaliate, um, to take matters into our own hands rather than put our trust in you. So I pray that uh, we, as... Uh, as Christians, as spirit-filled and spirit-led Christians, we would uh, always refrain from doing that and resist that temptation. And instead, we would just trust in you, speak the truth uh, that needs to be spoken in love, and uh, continue to walk each day with our little bitty hands in your big, great big hand. Lord, we uh, pray that we would be more open to being like you in our suffering and in our passion the wounds that we know we're going to receive in ministry uh, for and for ministry, the suffering that we uh, will endure. Uh, if we have a life that is completely free from suffering, then uh, we're probably not involved in ministry. And if we are, we're doing it in such a way as to satiate us and keep us comfortable and keep us from noticing things, as Brueggemann pointed out. So Lord, help us to see with your eyes and feel with your heart, to know with your mind and to walk with your hands and feet. Lord, we wanna lift up uh, the brothers and sisters that we have lifted up to you in our own quiet time here who are in need of your healing and your comfort and your presence and your love. Uh, we lift them all up to you and know that uh, you care and love each and every one of them. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Well, uh, oh, sacred heart, Head Now Wounded uh, is a uh, anonymous hymn that we're uh, reading this week. This Today's verse is this. What language, language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend? I'm sorry, to thank thee, dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow, thy pity without end. Oh, make me thine forever, and should I fainting be, Lord, let me never 
never outlive my love to thee. Amen. Well, that is the last verse in that hymn, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. So now as we uh, part to go into our quiet time with God and to meditate on the word, phrase, scripture, whatever it might be that you have jotted down, hear this benediction. Go now into this day with the strong name of Jesus Christ to sustain you. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining me here, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.